I have in front of me a few different firewalls that I've done reviews on. I've done reviews on the NetGate PFSense firewalls, both the software and the hardware directly from NetGate. I've done reviews on the Edge Router X. I've done reviews on the USG by Unify. I've done reviews on the Protectelli boxes, uh, such as this one here, which can run a lot of different firewall software. And a lot of people ask me always, comes down to which firewall should I buy or how do we know which one to choose for a client? Well, we're gonna start with this one right here, the Edge Router X. Not really a popular choice in terms of for our clients, uh, but it does have its use cases. This is a nice mini powerhouse of a firewall that you can pick up in the $50 range US, which is really reasonable for any firewall that's above consumer grade. Uh, it actually has fast routing capabilities. It has a ton of features once you get into the command line on it, so it's very diverse. It has uh, all kinds of different things you can do, but, but this is the big downside. One of them is, people ask me, what about intrusion detection systems and intrusion prevention systems and things like that? And I'm kind of cross-eyed a little bit when I hear that because I'm like, okay, those take a lot of horsepower to run, and I'm sorry, these are going to fail at that. Uh, you could probably find some hacky way to get more things running on this than it comes with, uh, but the fact of it is, and I'm even holding the adapter right here to show you, this thing's only a couple of watts, and that's it. It's so low powered, it just doesn't have the horsepower to do a lot of advanced things. Now, the other downside that the edge router line suffers from, maybe benefits from, is it is advanced as you can go with it, it's also very difficult to do. So if you look at any of the tutorials, a lot of people say, wow, that's a really long tutorial onto how to accomplish this or that. And I'm like, yeah, they are a lot of times so advanced features. It does require editing a config file and handwriting some of the rules and things like that. So that is a disadvantage with these as powerful as they are and inexpensive as you can get, especially this model for, um, they have their use cases. The wizards in them are nice to get kind of basic things set up, but for advanced use, get prepared to get advanced with it and break out the command line to really get uh, some you know, very specific configurations. But from a low wattage standpoint, and sometimes when you just have to gnat something over a point to point in a small area, we've used them for that. And that is sometimes a client use case for them. No real advanced routing needed, just a basic gnat, uh, low powered in a small, especially when we've done some of these outdoor setups. Uh, they just need to get some devices online behind a gnat and a site to site. This combines really nice. Now it does have, I will mention, I have not done any testing with it. This will connect into the UNMS dashboard by Unify. I've not done a lot of testing with that, but you can you can dig up some information on there, but like I said, not really done much with that. The next one people ask me about is the Unify USG line. Now I like these, these are nice, but they have back to specific use cases. They have beautiful dashboards to integrate with all the other Unify equipment. So if you're putting in really nice Unify wireless and all the different range of those and the Unify switches, which we love and we love their wireless, um, and then you put this at the head end of it all, you just get a great dashboard that gives you a good overview of what's going on. And from an MSP standpoint, we manage a lot of clients using these and they're great for those small businesses. Some of the advantages you have with this is that integrated dashboard with all the clients, the downside you run into with this. And this is where things get unfortunate. I really wish, I really wanna love it. I really wish I could love it. Uh, the thing I dislike about it, and this, this is where it starts to fall off, is when people need advanced routing options and they need VPNs or they have one of these that's double netted, you're back to editing files on this. You can't use the user interface uh, through the web interface to make it do some of the things that you want it to do. If both of these, you have two of these at two sites and are on public networks, they have essentially a one-click VPN setup and it's super easy. You're like, wow, that was nice. One of these behind a NAT, well, you instantly have problems. And they're just not as configurable unless you once again break out the command line on them. And if you break out the command line, uh, you can do quite a bit. Uh, these do offer as well the intrusion detections and intrusion prevention systems, but they're not very customizable. And once again, you're going back under the hood. If you really want to start tweaking with it, you just don't have a ton of rule sets and a ton of options uh, that you can do. It's kind of a basic filtering, basic bandwidth management. Everything's very basic on these or break out the command line to do anything there, including as, as of right now, if you just want to have a second IP address or a, a range of IPs put on the WAN side, that's still a command line feature. 
that's, I mean, for my small business clients that are, you know, a four person uh, salon, for example, we actually have a handful of like small offices like salons using these and they're great for them. I mean, they're, they're simplistic, they get the job done. But yeah, if you have a client that has a lot of firewall rules, a lot of routing, they just don't feel as robust and are a little bit more difficult to work with. I'll cover here the neck gate. Now I've seen people complain about this SG3100 and saying, well, it's an ARM device and ARM devices should be super cheap like these and inexpensive. This isn't just your average ARM device. Uh, this has a lot of power, good VPN speeds, um, can route gigabit and it's outstanding. Now this is, you know, a really nice box from the makers of PFSense. This is the NetGate box. We love putting these in because when you're do doing remote updates, you're gonna have problems with occasionally some of these type of boxes when you build it yourself. Doesn't mean you will have a problem, but occasionally there can be a problem because the folks at PFSense test their software specifically on their hardware. So we know whenever we hit update and we're remote, updates should go perfectly smooth. When you're running any type of white box hardware, there's always a possible chance of risk. And we actually ran into this with one of the other boxes. There was a, a parameter uh, with one of the white boxes we had that had to be passed on to the, uh, through Grub. And if you didn't know about it prior to the update, you couldn't do it remotely. You would have to get in there and add the parameter or it wouldn't boot. So having extra boot parameter, fixed problem. But one of those things, if you didn't stop and check before you just pushed update in your remote, you may be visiting that client on site. So we, when we deploy these, the majority of our clients have uh, one of the genuine net gates, this one or one of the more powerful ones at their office that we've set up. Now, the last thing I'll talk about in terms of the hardware here is these protect tele boxes. Uh, this particular one is still a great box. These come in a little bit of different varieties. They're reasonably priced. And I know someone's gonna point out that you can find these uh, from Alibaba for cheaper, not under a protect tele brand, I believe, just to save that person writing a comment. I believe they're a market under QOTOM um, on the Alibaba. So if you have time to wait for something to come from China, you can find these for less money. That's not a secret. I'll leave a link in Amazon where you can find these though on Amazon if you're looking for a US seller that has it in stock and get it to you faster. Now, the difference between when you get these from, uh, and it varies because Alibaba is kind of a random marketplace, it seems. Uh, sometimes I can tell you when things are available and then they'll have another brand, but it looks like the other brand and they'll have a lot of them. The one one thing nice about Protectelli, I've actually talked with the people there and uh, they seem to do a good job of putting these together because you can order them with the hard drive already installed and everything else. So they give you a bundle price. They're not cheap, but they're also really fast and really diverse. I mean, this has all Intel NICs on it, um, labeled WAN, LAN and WAN, Opt1, Opt2, Opt3, Opt4. Uh, we've tested this with Untangle. We've tested this with PFSense. Uh, these boxes work really well for them. They are a nice solution if you're looking for something small, compact, powerful um, out there. Uh, like I said, for most of our clients, we do prefer this, but this is an option as well. Now, both of these devices here and kind of these will all route at gigabit, but there is exceptions. If you're using some of the IDS uh, features on here, that limits it. So if you turn on the intrusion prevention system, you're gonna get slower speeds out of this. I know they're tweaking it, so I'm not gonna state the exact speed, but you can Google it. I know it's around the 100 meg. So if you have a faster than 100 meg internet connection, you're right away gonna have a bottleneck if you use those features. Uh, this one, you have to turn on hardware offloading, but that also eliminates, I think some of, I can't read exactly which feature. I have it in my video though. Uh, so you'll have some issues if you, try to get this, but it, you know, at what point do you expect a $49 product to fully perform at full gigabit? And it's not quite gigabit. I believe um, actual performance varies on these because it can only hold so many state tables. So you may be able to get a single stream, but you know, for heavy use cases, when you have a lot of devices behind it, which means a lot of state tables, that's another factor you have to think about. So if you're connecting a, a few hundred devices, not just one or two computers in your home, you can run into problems with this because it just it, it doesn't have the horsepower to handle all those simultaneous connections. And the same thing you can run into here. If you have a larger office, maybe you don't have as fast of internet, but you just have a lot of connections. Well, the more connections you have, the more streams that you have going across, the more states that are, you're gonna have hardware problems, uh, limitations with, well, it's a $99 box. When you get into these, 
These handle lots of devices. We've got these deployed, specifically this SG3100. And like I said, this is not your average ARM-based device. Um, and we've got several hundred computers behind it, no problem. Uh, we've actually put this in at some of the locations, like I, I did the Family Fun Center. We put one of this in, it handles their entire guest network. Uh, you know, tons of people on phones, the entire building, no problem at all. It, it's not even breaking a sweat. Um, it does handle just a lot of connections at once. It's also one of my favorites in terms of PFSense, because uh, PFSense is really the Swiss Army knife of firewalls. It's open source, it has absolutely amazing top to bottom features and tools for diagnosing your network. It's one of the reasons I've done so many in-depth videos on PFSense. And this is gonna lead into the software choices. So as much as I do love the Unify line, the software is a little lacking unless you break out the command line. For those of you that are not willing to dive into the command line and learn how some of that works, and there are tutorials on how some of those things work, well, this is where you're gonna have some shortcomings with these. PFSense, on the other hand, does do really, really well for just, you have some crazy configuration, and I have clients with some odd configuration requests, um, this can handle it. Uh, you have, we've connected these to other firewalls because they have things in the data center uh, that they're running that they have to specifically connect to with certain IPsec VPNs. We've had good luck getting PFSense to connect to those because PFSense exposes pretty much through a web interface all the options you need to really get this thing going in whatever weird configuration you want. Uh, we even had some client that used some weird DHCP relaying and that's actually built into here as well. Um, it was I've run into some odd configurations because they want to replace some legacy things that people come up with and PFSense hands down, whether you run it on the NetGate or you run it on your own hardware and build it yourself, is a great choice. Now this box, like I said, at 349, it's a pretty good value. But back to the last piece and kind of the software related part. Untangles and other firewall I reviewed. Now I think I kind of hinted towards it's open source and not. It's kind of a hybrid approach. Now the way they are, the, the firewall itself is open source, but they have closed source modules and subscriptions that give you feeds for filtering. And Untangles the firewall that I'm, I've been starting with a little bit newer. We've seen it out in the field a handful of times. I have friends uh, that work in IT. One of them said he's deployed several thousand of these over the years and he's one of their premier partners and loves the firewall. He says, never let him down. My testing with it has been, wow, it's great. I really have no complaints on it. Now, the thing about Untangle, they do have a wonderful, if you're a home user, a $50 a year subscription that's really gives you amazing features for 50 bucks uh, for the home user edition. They have licensing that goes for business users. And with the, the business class ones, you get that really nice filtering because a lot of people really want good filtering. And that's what you're really paying for when you pay for Untangle is you pay for that extra filtering that they offer. So they offer that, you know, I want to filter this website and the way this works. That is something you can do. The other nice thing that I've noticed with Untangle is, for example, people who ask me about policy-based routing. I've done videos about it on PFSense. I've also done how to use like PIA VPN with PFSense, and it's a much longer instruction than it is, for example, with, and I actually have Untangle loaded on this, is why I keep holding this one. Um, when you have Untangle, it's just a couple clicks. You can use NordVPN, PIA VPN, and a couple others. They're built in. You just drop in your username, password, and the VPN profile, and you're done in a few seconds. Uh, it will then, create a uh, tunnel network. So you can tunnel all your traffic over a VPN, and then you can even select specific devices with just the web interface and a checks box. Yes, you can do that on PF sets. No, it's not gonna be as easy because you have to write policies and routing and have multiple gateways and decide which gateway you want traffic to go out based on conditions and rules. Untangle is just kind of one click. So when it comes to some of that software features, these are really nice advanced features supported by both PFSense and Untangle. And I won't lie, Untangle makes it a little bit easier. And back to that filtering, yes, I know you can add some third-party add-ons and it's been a long time since I tested it, but I know one of them is uh, DNS thingy has a plugin for PFSense. Uh, that's also a paid service that allows you to add filtering features to PFSense. But once again, it's, going above and beyond those. The filtering really comes down to a lot of times you gotta pay for those type of subscriptions if you want really good uh, filtering features. Now both 
Untangle and PF Sense do have not just Sericata built in, uh, but they give you a lot of options with it, much more so than the Sericata that you get with the USG. I mean, I love the Unify interface in terms of ease of use, but once we start talking Sericata, tunneled VPNs, and everything else, they're not impossible to do on these, but they're basically command line. And if you find it difficult in PF Sense, you'll probably find it even more difficult over on the Unify and Edge Router lines versus Untangle. One click, put your username and password in for PIA VPN. I've tested it myself because I have a PIA account and it, it just works. So these are kind of the choices you have and these are some of the reasons we buy them. So if you have those advanced use cases and you really like that Swiss Army knife and you want some firewall for 349, I won't lie, NetGate, still my go-to, still one of my favorites. It's what I have at my office here. It's what we use to manage our network. And, you know, a project I was working on and we're going to be finishing soon, and I'll be maybe doing some videos about this, is in a complete captive portal, free radius, um, along with a signed SSL cert for doing the captive portal enhancements. Well, PFSense has all those plugins running in one place. Oh, by the way, it also has Zavix monitoring and other extensible plugins that really make PFSense a, like I said, I'm still really happy with it and still generally my go-to firewall for most solutions. But I won't lie, for those of you looking for just an easy way to uh, point and click your way through some simple setups, including like that tunneled network, untangle uh, the filtering and everything else for their home users that want just basic filtering that $50 a year, really hard to beat it at the price. But I think they're both really good um, firewalls. They're both great products and they're both products I recommend. So once again, it depends on your use case and if you really need those. So hopefully this was helpful in deciding which firewall to buy. Like I said, all of them have their merits, but once you start getting into advanced things, uh, PF Sense and Untangle are really the the two I like. PF Sense still being my favorite. Just I, I love all the bells, whistles, and features, and that's a reason there's so many PF Sense videos I have on my channel here. Um, if you have other thoughts on there, and I know there's going to be at least a couple people who mentioned the Microtik routers, um, they come over to the edge router category. They seem to be really nice. I've not done much testing with them. We really don't run into them much in the field. Uh, they seem to be a good value for their money, but they also have a more complicated interface. And I've talked about the security. Um, they it had left some default insecure settings, which is kind of scary in, when a lot of home users deploy it. I think everything should default to secure and you open it up. And their original policies apparently allowed you to create insecure settings um, and then you had to close them. I think they've changed the policies, but it's still one of those things anytime a firewall company is like that. Um, and I, yeah, I'm, I have not done a lot of testing on the Microtik ones. I guess they're okay um, if you're looking for really good budget, but um, if you're looking for the powerhouses, uh, PF Sense and Untangle are still there for the all the advanced uses, lots of flexibility and all the belt, you know, just that real advanced power set along with filtering and things like that, intrusion detection and everything else. All right, hopefully this is helpful and thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback. Or if you just want to say thanks, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.